Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Dan. This is Subsequence. It's a, a sequencer for teletype, and it uses Grid as an interface. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, how to patch up teletype to use the sequencer, or how to use the Grid interface. It's not going to be a, a super compelling musical example, I don't think. Um, but you know, follow the channel. I have a lot more stuff coming out in that vein in the coming weeks. At its core, Subsequence is a pretty basic chord sequencer. You can send those chords through uh, CV1 through 3 or out I2C to something like Just Friends, Disting EX, or I2C to MIDI. It's pretty easy to modify this if you need to add some other variant. But the real fun to be had is in taking some voltage source, usually an external sequence or function generator, um, plugging that into Teletype, and then using that to create a secondary sequence or a subsequence, if you will, that is based on both the external input and the chord sequence that you've programmed into, into Grid here. Uh, easier to, to show you that than it is to explain it. Uh, so let's get patching and see how this works. So loading subsequence requires that we use this launcher scene to then pick from one of the uh, variant scenes which are kind of tuned for certain I2C modules. If you're not using I2C, you can launch any of these, it doesn't really matter. For now, I'm going to use option 4, which is I2C to MIDI. So that's the, uh, the fourth button down here. And now it's loaded. Alright, now that we have the scene launched, uh, let's, let's start by putting in a, a pattern length. This is going to be four steps, or you know, four bars. And these are going to be chords. Let's get the clock going here into one. So one is what's going to advance this uh, this chord sequence, starting at the top, scrolling down. We can do these in multiple octaves too. Now a kind of funny thing about this is um, the, the chords will be held if you just remove a chord. And it'll it'll stop once it reaches the next chord, right? but this also means if we stop the clock, you have you have stuck notes. So we do need to um, tell the script to to kill those notes. Uh, so Pamela's workout has a, an option where you can uh, you can send a trigger at the end of the sequence, and I'm going to use that to to stop the clock and stop hanging hanging notes. Um, we can also use that to reset. You'll see, you know, when I press play, it's just going to resume wherever the playhead is. Um, if we want to have it reset, we would plug into four. I'm just going to mult these together. So the same uh, trigger that that fires when we end the, the clock is going to both stop hanging notes and do a reset. get the idea okay let's let's punch something more interesting in here see if I can get something that sounds nice cool I think we're gonna work with that um, other things you'll note um, TR1 blinks every time a chord is played again if you have like a, a held note type situation you'll see it blink when the, the chord fires it won't fire the second time though. So you can use this to have like a, an external envelope or something that uh, processes uh, some external synth or something like that. All right, now it's time for the fun part, which is uh, taking an external sequence and plugging it in here. Uh, I'm gonna actually, you know, just, just to demonstrate how this works, I'm gonna take a, a fixed voltage source, plug it in to teletype, and then we need to have, um, the sequence will come out on CV4. I'm going to send that to uh, to Platts. And we need a trigger out, which will be through CV3 or 4. More on that in a second. Um, I'm just going to trigger a little AD envelope. And um, we need some sort of trigger that comes in to, to sample, to indicate when we need to sample this CVN. So I'm going to use PAMS for that. Um, that's going to go into uh, input three here. So that's pretty much the all the patching we need to do to kind of run the operations here. Uh, let's get this started. So this is with, with zero volts coming in. If 
I move up once to my tone. That's the next interval in the chord. kind of playable. You can use pretty much any voltage source to do this sort of stuff. But where the real magic happens, I think, is in plugging in some sort of external sequencer. So I'm going to use marbles here. Um, I am going to change the patch around a little bit. Like the order in which the trigger and, 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 and you know, external voltage comes in does matter. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to clock marbles using that same uh, pulse. And then I'm going to take a clock out from marbles and send it back in. Okay, so Marbles is plugged in here. Um, I'm just gonna play around with the bias and the spread just to kind of get, um, get something going here. Well, there's an interesting feature um, in here. You'll see these triggers. Trigger three fires every single pulse. Four doesn't necessarily fire every pulse. There's um, duplicate note detection in here, so that if within the same set, uh, step it detects a duplicate note, uh, it will only send the first trigger out, and you can actually use that to add rests to your sequence. It sounds, sounds kind of nice in certain applications. The rest of the grid functions here. So you'll see this, um, these four buttons here. These are these are basically pattern pages. So the, we've been on the first pa uh, pattern the whole time. Uh, we can come in here to the second pattern. I don't know. Let's see what this sounds like. We'll do another four, four bar. <laughs> like two song patterns we can switch between. patterns we can then um, come here to the arranger view and this is uh, gonna scan left to right and we can basically say play the first pattern twice play the second one twice um, in order for it to begin following this arrangement we're gonna press this follow button and here you'll see the first pattern is selected the dimly illuminated LED which just disappeared that shows you what the uh, upcoming pattern is going to be on the next step so we know that on the next uh, jump, it's gonna go back to the first pattern, which you'll see here, loop back around. Oh, by the way, <laughs> it, it automatically calculates the loop point wherever the first uh, step is. It doesn't have anything selected, right? So if I took that off, it would just loop around immediately. This uh, TR2 fires whenever a ranger switches from uh, one pattern to the next. So if you're playing the same pattern and it repeats, it won't fire. It's only when there's a new 
a uh, new section of the song that it, it fires. So I like to run that out to like a sample and hold or a sequential switch so that I can have uh, events happening elsewhere in the system when we transition to a new part of, of the composition. Um, and then I think I mentioned before that CV one through three just outputs the, uh, the first three intervals in the chord. I'll just actually take this guy here just to let you hear that. polyphonic module or just have like a, a bass line that accompanies and kind of harmonizes depending on what sounds good to you. Also here in the arrangement mode, this is where you select the scale. This will probably sound terrible, but you'll get the idea. there. Um, the last thing I wanted to point out here is um, the, the reset behavior and the follow behavior. Um, if, if you're currently in the arranger loop and it's, it has follow mode on, you can, um, you can take it out of follow mode just like this and then it will just stay in a, a constant loop on this pattern. But you can also um, jump to any pattern just by pressing it. It'll immediately jump there on the next step. And if you reset um, while follow mode is off, it'll just reset to the first step every time, the first step of the currently selected pattern. But if you have follow mode on, it will reset and it will jump back to the very first step of the arranger every time. really no um, no visual feedback when you've initiated a reset you just have to kind of know that it's happened now by default these chords have uh, three notes in them but there's an extended chord mode you can enable here in the arranger and I'll kind of get this playing so you can hear what it sounds like I hope that about covers it. I may do a follow-up video with some more tips and tricks, but for now, this should get you started. Um, check out the link in the, uh, in the video description and let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you around.